We are live. We are live, live, live. What's up? Billy Carson here, Forbidden Knowledge. All right. Thank you, everyone. We are live on multiple platforms tonight. Looking at Facebook, several Facebook pages, Billy Carson, Billy C. Carson, Forbidden Knowledge, Anunnaki History, Forbidden Mystery School. <clears throat> We're also live on LinkedIn, live on both of my uh, verified Twitter accounts, Coach Carson and Forbidden Knowledge. So welcome, everyone. Thank you for hanging out. Thank you for being patient uh, and giving me a chance to hop in here. Looking forward to tonight's talk. Tonight, I'm going to spend a little bit of time talking about the Emerald Tablets, which is actually um, my book, The Compendium of the Emerald Tablets. The Emerald Tablets themselves were written by Thoth, the Atlantean priest king. He has gone by many names over the eons. Thoth, Toth, Dehudi, Tehudi, Quetzalcoatl, Lord Pakal, uh, Mercury, Odin, you know, Lord, you know the, the name Veracocha. The names go on and on and on. Wang D. Uh, I mean, the names are just he's got so many names over many, many eons. And, you know, what I should do is um, grab a copy. Well, I'm going to I'm going to go on a, a virtual copy of the book. That's what I'll do. I'll do a virtual copy of the book right here so I can read it and actually show some show the pages that I'm reading on the screen with you guys so that you can see what I'm reading from. <clears throat> All right. And um, what I'll do is I'll show a copy of the book here on the screen as well by simply just going to my online store and pulling up a picture of it. But I want to spend a little bit of time talking about the animal tablets and tell you, telling you a little bit more about what I have planned and what I'm going to be doing. Uh, with this work. It's been a bestseller now for two and a half years straight, which is a huge accomplishment. The book is doing phenomenal numbers in terms of its um, readership and its actual ratings. So if you look up my book on Amazon, which is only where 50% of the books are moved because the rest of them sell from the website, for it to be a bestseller with only 50% of the books being sold on Amazon, that's a huge accomplishment. But the bigger accomplishment, I think, is 1,465 uh, five stars. It's a five star rated book on Amazon with over 1,465 ratings. That's huge. That's very, very hard to do. You know, there's very, very few books or very few of anything on Amazon that's five star at that rating level, at that number of actual individual people input. And as you know, on Amazon, you can't fake ratings. It's real people that really bought the product. Uh, so that's what I love about it. So I want to thank everyone that has participated in that, everyone who has gone and left me a rating. I, I really, really do truly appreciate it. OK, um, so today we're going to go a little bit into the preface of the Emerald Tablets. I think I want to read the preface to you guys uh, because, and, you know, and and. And let's just meditate on that preface for a minute because it's really powerful. I mean, it's super duper duper powerful. And it's something that just reading the preface alone brings avenues of enlightenment, in my personal opinion. And then we're going to go into a few of the first verses of the Emerald Tablets. And you'll see just within that, just within that time frame of this 35, 40 minutes I'm going to spend with you tonight, you're going to see why this writing, this work, of art is so amazing and has captivated literally millions of people all over the world. All right. Millions and millions of people all over the world have been captivated by this information. So I'm going to share a little bit of that knowledge and wisdom with you. I'm going to read some of this stuff to you and add my own conjecture to it as well. All right. So it's going to be a, it's going to be a good night. All right. Somebody said, please hold the book up. What I'm going to do is I'm going to share my screen and show you the book because I would have to get up and leave the camera to go grab it. It's actually up on the bookshelf. But I will um, share my screen here. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> and video file. No, not video file. Uh, let's see, share screen. OK. Window is going to be this one. And so this is the actual book right here, Compendium of the Emerald Tablets. And uh, 
This is on ForbiddenKnowledge.com. You can actually use coupon code BIOHACK, B-I-O-H-A-C-K, all one word. I'll drop this link for you in the uh, chat and the coupon code. You know, this is making all kind of duplications on the screen. You can see a fractal holographic universe on your screen right now, right? <laughs> so coupon code biohack, all one word. I'll give you a discount on the book. I just dropped it in the chat. Okay. And hopefully you can see that link wherever you are. Give you a chance to get a discount on the book uh, from ForbiddenKnowledge.com. All right. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and read from the Animal Tablets today. All right. So hopefully you can see this on your screen. I actually have a my book pulled up uh, on the screen in PDF format. <clears throat> and um, let's see what we're going to start with today. I want to get to the preface. There's so much before the preface in my book, um, but I really want to get, actually, let me start from the beginning and just show you what's in the beginning stages because that's kind of important as well. <clears throat> there are some great reviews in my book. This is from Eric Von Daniken, the best-selling author of Chariots of the Gods. He says, I am so impressed with your work and your research. It has been a pleasure. It was a pleasure. He's obviously, you know, Eric Von Daniken is the granddaddy of the ancient astronaut theory. He wrote the book Chariots of the Gods, which has now sold over 80 million copies worldwide and was translated into every single language on the planet. He's been in probably more shows than anybody on the planet as well. And thankfully, he actually took a deal with me to do a TV show on Forbidden Knowledge TV, which is already airing. I think we're in episode number three of season one, which is probably going to be the last TV show that he does in terms of it being his own show. So that's pretty exciting. Then we have today, Billy Carson brings to our community the compendium of the Emerald Tablets. Finally, we are able to dive deeper into the meaning of what Thoth really intended for us to know, to explore and discover what is truly important about ourselves and the world around us. Jimmy Church, jimmychurchradio.com, iHeartRadio, Coast to Coast AM. Great friend of mine. He wrote the forward to the book. Then we have George Nori. Billy Carson is, is an amazing researcher, and I have admired him for a very long time. That's George Nori, Coast to Coast AM. He's a Hall of Fame radio host, okay? <clears throat> then we have Billy's assimilation of scientific, metaphysical, and historical concepts is mind-blowing. He has an eloquent ability to relate challenging concepts in a practical way, offering each and every reader a chance to delve deeply into the scientific and spiritual mysteries of the universe. Busy Gold, one of the world's top professional development and wellness experts. Thank you, Busy. Um, read a couple more. Donnie Arcade, ancient knowledge updated to a modern format. This book is well preserved, is a well preserved time capsule and must uh, be read, a must read for anyone on the path of enlightenment. Donnie Arcade, Billboard artist. Shout out to DA. Here's one from my professor at MIT. Billy is a thoughtful and engaging person who seeks to challenge the status quo and inform people about esoteric subjects of interest. Dr. Tara Swart, neuroscientist and author at MIT. <clears throat> and here's another one. I love the fact that you travel the world and visit these ancient sites in person and do the real field research. I love your work. Jason Martell, television host, Ancient Aliens. My good friend, Jason. Thank you, Jason. Just to name a few. So as you can see, the, the book... Obviously, those are some pretty big reviews from some pretty, pretty big and important people. <clears throat> and I want to see if I can find my, here's my dedication. <clears throat> so I dedicated this book to the memory of my mother, Ingrid Carson. She told me about the Nazca lines and Machu Picchu in the 1970s. My mother believed that they may be remnants of an ancient airport. Visiting these ancient ruins became one of my driving forces behind my research and my travels. And in 2018, I fulfilled my dreams, researching and visiting Peru, where I witnessed all of its wonders. I love you, mom. Rest in power. My mom, unfortunately, she passed away, um, you know, quite some time ago now. But she told me about Machu Picchu and the, the Nazca lines in the 1970s. And she said, there's nothing new under the sun, which is a biblical quote, but is so very accurate. <clears throat> 
The forward was written by Jimmy Church. It's, ama it's an amazing forward. I'll let you guys check that out when you get the book. And my preface is in here where I, I start off talking about the goals of the Compendium of the Animal Tablets, what to expect when reading this book, who studied the tablets and when, <clears throat> you know, um, which is pretty interesting. Let me read some of this here. Seekers of wisdom and knowledge have studied the tablets in the Hermetic tradition up until 1925. Hermeticism is a tradition of study and spirituality based on the writings of Hermes. At that time, Thoth chose to appoint Michael Doriel, also known as Maurice, to locate and translate the original tablets. In this text, I use Michael Doriel's study of the tablets to establish a timeline for the teachings of Thoth. It is important to note that although my study of the Emerald Tablets will focus on the work translated by Dr. Doriel, I have taken the time to mention several other individuals out of many hundreds who have studied the Emerald Tablets, their extensive research of the Emerald Tablets, and has dramatically influenced our history on human beings. In addition, I have referenced a significant number of topics, individuals, and modern day projects that include, that continue to influence the study of the tablets. <clears throat> Included throughout this entire book are links that provide additional information. That's right, guys. Every where I put information, I provide the source links, something that very few people can or will be willing to do because a lot of their information doesn't stand by facts. OK, I give you facts based off of references and there's references I provide to you so that you can do the research for yourself. That's important. These links are included to make it easier for you to do your own investigative research. I implore you to take notes and make an effort to follow through on your own individual study of the information. There are more materials and research possibilities than space allows for in this book. I hope that as your guide, I can accelerate your awakening via the power of this information and we can expand our consciousness together. The preface of Dr. Doriel's translation is a treasure chest of vital information enabling anyone to establish a mindset needed to understand the importance of the Emerald Tablets. Then I give you my table of contents. <clears throat> and we move into uh, some other areas documenting the study of alien life. And we talk about what that really means how those in authority within Western civilization approach the study of life beyond earth, the historical facts there, the Catholic influence on our awareness of the alien presence, which the Catholics believe in aliens and have talked about it many times. In fact, uh, just about maybe six years ago, the uh, Vatican had made an official statement that they wanted to be the first ones to baptize an alien, believe it or not. All these quotes are in here. <clears throat> the vastness of our universe and beyond. I'm going to get into also religious and science. I, I, I go into uh, what what they are and what separated the two and what combines the two. Aliens, creationism, or intelligent design. I touch on that topic. Who believes? This is an important subject here. Who believes? The Bible makes more than one reference to an, to unearthly visitors. Do not forget to show hospitality to strangers, for by doing so, some people have shown hospitality to angels without knowing it. Hebrews 13, 2, right? I've gone through this Bible a million times, up, down, inside, out, backwards and forwards. I know all of these quotes and references to people that are not from Earth. I propose that these angels are actually aliens, and I don't mean aliens in a bad way. I mean that we are them and they are us. The Christian church... Uh, is not the only religious group that has belief systems open to the existence of extraterrestrial life and, and outwardly divinities. I want to stress that it is not that it is essential that you understand this. Virtually every religion that exists on this planet involves deities or a deity that claims to not be of this world. What are the heavens after all? They are not planes of existence beyond this world. Are they not planes of existence beyond this world? Let's take a quick look at some of the oldest and largest religions and their emphasis on other worldly deities. The following numbers reflect the findings by the Eminent Pew Research Center. So these are researched numbers, not Billy Carson's numbers. These are numbers based on research that you can look up. Christianity, 2.4 billion people worship Jesus. And he said unto them, 
You are from beneath. I am from above. You are of this world. I am not of this world. John 8, 23. Let's look at the Islam. 1.8 billion people believe that the prophet Muhammad was meditating in a cave of Hira by himself when the angel Gabriel, who's not from earth, by the way, descended, which means he came down from above to him and told him to recite the words of God as the prophet of Muhammad was illiterate at the time. He had to actually go hire a scribe to write down the words he was getting from this person that came to him from space. Hinduism, 1.5, uh, 1.15 billion Hindus believe that numerous spiritual beings and deities referred to as gods, goddesses, and divas populate the universe and actively interact with humans and influence humankind from outside of the world. Buddhism, 521 million people. Buddhists refer to a varied tradition of different gods and goddesses, not of this world. But though they do not worship any major deity, they are loyal to their own beliefs. Their beliefs feature praying and chanting to Lord Buddha, who provides the role model for seeking enlightenment of the divine. The modern translator of the Emerald Tablets, Michael Doriel, spent many months in Tibet studying under the Dalai Lama shortly after World War I. What does this mean, guys? <laughs> Pretty interesting. So far, none of these religions or spiritual uh, teachings believe in any, any masters from earth. Mormons, 17 million. The angel Moroni, not from earth, in Mormonism, is an angel who visited Joseph Smith on numerous occasions beginning on September 21st, 1823, according to Smith. The angel was the guardian of the golden plates that early Mormons believed were the source of material for the Book of Mormon, and Smith had unburied from a hillside near Smith's western New York home. Judaism, 14 million. The Old Testament holds many accounts of outwardly visitors, the, out, the out, otherworldly stranger who visited Lot, the brother of Abraham, encouraged him to leave the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. The prophet Elijah ascended into the heavens in a chariot of fire which is me, a spaceship with retro fuel blasts. Ezekiel fills pages of his prop, fulfilled pages of his prophecy, describing in detail uh, what many consider the blueprints for a spaceship operation. You know, don't forget about Ezekiel's wheel. There are many, many more such examples of modern day Judaism and, and modern day Judaism embraces the study of extra, extraterrestrial life. So we're talking about a lot of great stuff here dealing with, you know, religious sources and spiritual sources that really are, are getting their knowledge and wisdom, according to them, from people not from Earth. Famous Armenian mystic and writer George Gurdjieff searched for the source of esoteric knowledge and stated that what he found will seem strange to many people when I say that this prehistoric Egypt was Christian in many thousands of years before the birth of Christ. And that's a fact, because I've been there. They, they're called the Coptic Christians, and that Christianity existed long before Jesus there have been many Christ even before him. He also discovered and said that the Christian church and the Christian form of worship was not invented by the fathers of the church in a ready-made form from Egypt. Only not from Egypt is that we know, but what we do know, Egypt was the same place as the other, but it existed much earlier. This ancient Egypt was the same place as the other, but it existed much earlier. Only small bits of it survived in historical times and these bits have been preserved in secret and so well that we do not even know where we've been preserved or how we've been preserved. This is pretty interesting stuff. So you got to really go through this information and really bring you a lot of information and knowledge from a lot of scholars and a lot of statistics on religion, spirituality, and who these people are worshiping. And what I try to establish in the beginning of my book is a concept and understanding of why all this information is in there that when you hear the word alien, it doesn't mean a little green man with antennas on his head. When you hear the word alien, I'm talking about people, flesh and blood people that look just like me and you and you and me. They are us and we are them. We're just cousins like the Native Americans, the Hopi call them star brothers. These are people, not, not anything else. They put on their pants one leg at a time, just like you. So what I want to do is I want to delve into the preface uh, of the Emerald Tablets and 
Let me see if I can dig that up here real quick, because this is a really good read. Let's see here. Okay. By the way, this picture right here on your screen is actually four photos that I took myself. This is the place where Jesus disappeared from the Bible at the age of 12 and he went to Egypt. When he disappears from the age of 12, it's uh, the gospel of the Holy 12 is where you can track down those scriptures to provide evidence of that. Well, he went to Egypt and guess what? That's what the scriptures say. Guess what? That's where he went. This is the house that he lived in. Him and his mother both lived in this house. The bed and everything that he slept in is a shrine in there now. I just visited again just a few months ago. I was in Egypt. And this is the place where he used to lay his head. He went there to learn the Egyptian mysteries. From who? Thoth the Atlantean. And then he left there. He went to Tibet to learn Reiki healing and Qigong. And then he went to India to learn the mystic arts, teaching reincarnation all the way back. And so these are all true stories. And yeah, he was a real person. He really did exist. Some people think, you know, Yeshua was a myth, but Yeshua was a real person. Let's look at some of the people that have touched these tablets and have deciphered them and worked with them. The Queen of Sheba, a black queen of Africa at that time. Uh, according to DJ Conway and Crystal Enchantment, the Queen of Sheba knew about the original animal tablet of Thoth. There's a singular animal tablet. The Queen of Sheba is a figure first mentioned in the Hebrew Bible. She introduced Solomon to the great mines of Africa, including extensive emerald mines. Their story has been elaborated and expanded over the many years by Jewish, Islamic, and Ethiopian cultures and has become one of the most popular legends in the ancient Near East. And I'll give you a link to that information. All right. Pythagoras. Followers of Pythagoras accepted law and decisions communicated by him and honored him as an emissary from Zeus. Who is Zeus, by the way? Zeus is Enki from Sumeria, Thoth's dad. Pythagoras is famous for his teaching of the transmigration, transmigration of souls, which states that every soul is immortal and upon death enters into a new body, which is reincarnation. He is also credited with developing Musica, Eusevalis, which state that the planets move according to mathematical equations and thus resonate to produce an inaudible symphony of music. What's interesting is that we just discovered this symphony of music. And we've been able to record those frequencies from all the planets in just more modern times. Interesting that he knew this thousands of years ago. Pythagoras' philosophies of solar system profoundly influenced Plato Alexander of Tyana. Copernicus and Sir Isaac Newton. There's a translation of the Emerald Tablet of Thoth at the Cambridge Library in England by Sir Isaac Newton. Okay, pretty interesting stuff. I go into all of these, so you can really check all this information out. And I provide sources for all of it. St. Thomas Aquinas. He actually was influenced by the Emerald Tablets, right? The Book of Causes uh, in the 13th century AD, which translates the Hermetic Emerald Tablet from a 19th century AD unknown Arabian source. So these tablets and these tablets have been going on and on and passing from hand to hand. And the knowledge and wisdom is going, taking on different forms, and different fractals and different ways of putting out the information and knowledge based off a person's contextual idea and concepts and understanding for thousands of years. Philip of Tripoli, Robert, Roger Bacon. Okay, Sir Francis Bacon, Professor Carl Jung. You know, amazing stuff here. So I think I'm getting close to the. Um, let me see if I'm getting close to this. Uh, oh, this is a great photo right here. This is a photo of me. <laughs> wow. This is a photo of me in Chichen Itza down in the Yucatan Peninsula. I took this picture now 25 years ago. It was one of my very first trips that I ever took to go see an ancient site and ancient temples. I had already known in my mind that I wanted to be a person that became a field researcher. I wanted to get out in the field. I wanted to go see these places for, from my own, on my own, see them with my own eyes. 
this is long before the internet, long before social media and all that stuff existed. And um, I knew I had to get out there. So I said, the first thing I'm going to do is find a place that's fairly close. So hopefully that will keep my costs and expenses down. Some place that it's not going to have me on a plane for 15, 20 plus hours and give me so much information that I can, you know, I can go back and digest it for months. And I found Mexico. In Mexico, there's a wealth of incredible places, incredible ancient sites, which I found. And, uh, you know, the, one of the greatest ones that I, I went to was Chichen Itza, which was phenomenal to see those temples and uh, to climb the pyramid. You can't climb the pyramid, pyramid anymore. There's a picture of me in the lower left. I actually am at the top of that pyramid, which is now forbidden. Forbidden. OK, you can't go up there anymore. So that was a pretty incredible opportunity for me. Here I am in more recent times at uh, El Caracol, an ancient observatory. You can see the observatory uh, in Chichen Itza on the left, and you can see the modern day observatory on the right. You see these people are advanced, super advanced, super duper advanced. All right, Doriel's preference. <clears throat> Let's dig into this. Doriel's preference, preface. Doriel's preface needs recalling before we look at the actual text of the Emerald Tablets. Written in 1925, the preface outlines for students of the Emerald Tablets his philosophy of how he approaches the translation and the care of the tablets, Doriel writes. In the following pages, I will reveal some of the mysteries which as yet have only been touched upon lightly either by myself or other teachers or students of truth. Man's search for understanding of the laws which regulate his life has been unending, yet always just beyond the veil which shields the higher planes from the material man's vision, the truth has existed, ready to be assimilated by those who enlarge their vision by turning inward, not outward in their search, looking inside, not looking on the outside. The more you look on the outside, the less you see. The more you look on the inside, the more you see. In the silence of material senses lies a key to unveiling of wisdom. He who talks does not know. He who knows does not talk. The highest knowledge is unutterable. For, it's, for it exists as an entity in lanes which transcend all material words or symbols. All symbols but are keys to doors leading to truths. And many times the door is not open because the key seems so great that the things which are beyond it are not visible. If we can understand that all keys, all material symbols are manifestations, are but extensions of a great law and truth, we will begin to develop the vision which will enable us to penetrate beyond the veil. All things in all universes move according to law. And the law which regulates the movement of the planets is no more immutable than the law which regulates the material expressions of man. One of the greatest of all cosmic laws is that which is responsible for the formation of man as a material being. The great aim of the mystery schools of all ages has been to reveal the workings of the law, which connect man the material and man the spiritual. The connecting link between the material man and the spiritual man is the intellectual man, for the mind partakes of both the material and immaterial qualities. The aspirant for higher knowledge must develop the intellectual side of his nature and so strengthen his will that it is able to concentrate all powers of his being on and in the plane he desires. The great search for light, life, and love only begins on the material plane, carried to its ultimate, its final goal is complete oneness with the universal consciousness. <clears throat> the foundation in this material is the first step. Then comes the higher goal of spiritual attainment. In the following pages, I will give an interpretation of the Emerald Tablets and their secret hidden and esoteric meanings. Concealed in the words of Thoth are many meanings which do not appear on the surface. Light of knowledge brought to bear upon the tablets will open many new fields for thought. Read and be wise, but only if the light of your own consciousness awakens 
the deep-seated understanding, which is an inherent quality of the soul. And I said, wow, deep. This is powerful stuff. Just the preface alone needs to be read a thousand times just to prepare yourself for what you're get, getting ready to partake in. <clears throat> That's some heavy, heavy, heavy um, knowledge right there, what I just read. If you understand that the power in what's coming ahead of this can literally help you alter realities in the third dimension, you, you become a time traveler with these tablets. You literally create ripples in space time that alter your own future reality and other people's future reality in the third dimension. You time travel through conscious thought <clears throat> and you can actually obtain the ability to incarnate in and on the plane you desire. In other words, you can incarnate the master, the mastering of these tablets will allow you to incarnate at will, not only incarnate at will, but not just in the third dimension in and on any plane. In other words, even multidimensional. It's, it's incredible power. It's incredible stuff. The translator of the Emerald Tablets, who was connected to the Great White Lodge and worked his way through the pyramid priesthood, was given instruction to recover and return the ancient tablets to the Great Pyramid. <clears throat> the quote below comes from the preface and introduction of the Emerald Tablets of Thoth, translated by Michael Doriel. This, after adventures which need not be detailed here, was accomplished before returning them, he was permitted to translate and retain a copy of the wisdom engraved on the tablets. This was done in 1925 and only now has permission been given for part to be published. It is expected that many will scoff. Yet the true student will read between the lines and gain wisdom. You ever heard that saying you show an imbecile the moon and he points at the finger. That's a powerful statement. It's a true statement. If you understand what I just said, you'll get it. People will scoff at these tablets and think, oh, this is a bunch of hoopla foolishness. But <laughs> what did it say? The true student will read between the lines and gain wisdom. If the light is in you. Let me say that again. If the light is in you, the light which is engraved in these tablets will respond. See, these tablets are a frequency of light. All frequencies are emanating forms of light waves light and frequencies and vibrations are, are combined together electromagnetism we're talking about everything that exists in the universe is made of a frequency there is no they're all waves there is nothing solid there's no solid substance anything that looks solid is only solid because of an illusion you've slowed the waves down to the point where you've frozen light, you've almost frozen light. In other words, you collapse those waves into a structure that appears to be so solid. But in true reality, because of wave particle duality, we know everything exists as waves. Now a word as to the material aspect of the tablets. They consist of 12 tablets of emerald green formed from a substance created through alchemical transmutation. Now, transmutation is a changing of one element into another by radioactive decay, nuclear bombardment, or a similar process. So we know that alchemical transmutation is a real thing that has been obtained in modern day times. It's not any kind of mystical magic. I like to clarify these things. They are, imper in, in, they are imperishable, resistant to all elements and substances. In effect, the atomic and cellular structure is fixed. No change ever taking place. In this respect, they violate the material law of ionization. Upon them are engraved characters in the ancient Atlantean language, characters which respond to attuned thought waves, releasing the associated mental vibration in the mind of the reader. They tap into the frequency that's emanating from your own mind. Your mind vibrates at a specific frequency based on how it is at any moment. Okay? And those light waves leave your skull. They could actually quantum entangle with the light waves from the tablets. And you can download information. You can download wisdom and knowledge directly from this, these tablets. <clears throat> the tablets are fastened together with hoops of gold colored alloy suspended from a rod of the same material. So much for the material appearance. The, the wisdom contained therein is the foundation of the ancient mysteries. And for the seeds which open eyes and the mind, his wisdom shall be increased a hundredfold. Woo. Powerful stuff. 
So then it goes into the tablets. And I start talking about a few things here. Um, let me re let me go into some of this uh, this for these first verses because <clears throat> this is some crazy stuff. This is what got me really hooked on the tablets. I Thoth, the Atlantean, master of mysteries, keeper of records, mighty king, magician, living from generation to generation, being about to pass into the halls of Amenti. These records of the mighty wisdom of great Atlantis set down for the guidance of those that are to come after. That's us. These tablets, these tablets are for us. In the great city of Kior, on the island of Undal, in a time far past, I began this incarnation. So I say in these passages, we can see that already the tone is set for reincarnation and regeneration. Very similar to this biblical statement in Corinthians 2. All right. Second Corinthians says in 5, 2-7, we grow weary in our present bodies and we long to put our heavenly bodies on like new clothing for we will put on heavenly bodies. It's the same thing. It's the same thing. We will not be spirits without bodies. We will live in these earthly bodies. This is 2 Corinthians I'm reading from, guys. We will not be spirits without bodies. Listen to what I'm saying. This is, this is not me saying this. This is 2 Corinthians. We will live in these earthly bodies. We groan inside. But it's not what we want to die and get rid of the, these bodies that clothe us. Rather, we want to put on our new bodies so that these dying bodies will be shallowed up, swallowed up by life. <clears throat> God himself has prepared for us this. And as a guarantee, he has given us his Holy Spirit. So we are always confident, even though we know that as long as we live in these bodies, we are not home with the Lord, for we live by believing and not by seeing. So we're talking about an understanding of these people who wrote a lot of the parts of the biblical text. They were writing from their perspective as well, based on other ancient texts where they got the information about regenerating bodies, getting new bodies, transferring consciousness into new bodies. This is what this is saying. It's talking about putting on a new sleeve, getting rid of the old sleeve and getting it hop hopping into a new sleeve. It said we will not be spirits without bodies. Now, you're going to have a spirit and a body. We right now have a spirit and a body. Nothing's going to change. <clears throat> this has been taught for super, super ancient times. And Thoth said, not as the little men of the present age did, the mighty ones of Atlantis live and die. But rather from eon to eon did they renew their life in the halls of Amenti, where the river, river of life flows eternally onward. Jesus says in the New Testament, in the book of John 738, he that believes in me, out of his being shall flow rivers of living water. It's the same statement. Why are these statements so similar to the statements in the tablets? Because that's where they come from. The teachings of Yeshua were the teachings he learned in Egypt when he went to go learn the Egyptian mysteries. He's saying the same things because this, this is the source that he learned it from. A hundred times ten have I descended the dark way that led to the light. And as many times have I ascended from the darkness into the light, my strength and power have been renewed. Now for a time I descend, and the men of Ken, Kim shall know me no more. <clears throat> so this is pretty interesting stuff. Understand that there are men of Kim, refers to the people of Egypt. This is Kem is Egypt before it was called Egypt. Notice that we get our word alchemy from this Egyptian name. There are other interesting statements made by the writer Thoth. He says that he has descended into the halls of Amenti, where there is a rejuvenation chamber, regeneration chamber. Certainly, we can understand that the concept of cellular regeneration. He says that he spent a total of 10,000 years, 100 times 10, regenerating his bodies over the course of many eons. Those also references the river of life, stating, I began this incarnation from eon to eon, where the river of life flows eternally onward. Remember how Jesus makes the same reference in John 38. Whoever believes in me, the scripture said, rivers of living water shall flow from within. <clears throat> Pretty interesting stuff. So then I go into the chambers of the brain and, uh, and I go into the ventricles and some other things here. 
things that relate to this information, but I want to get, I don't want to spend too much time because I'm running out of time. I want to get into a little deeper into this, these first verses here. And Thoth said, but in the time yet unborn, will I rise again, mighty and potent, requiring an accounting of those left behind me. Another interesting statement made by Thoth many thousands of years before Jesus tells his disciples that he will rise again in Mark 9.31. Then beware, O men of Kim, if ye falsely betrayed my teaching, for I shall cast ye down from your highest estate into the darkness of the caves for whence ye came. Betray not my secrets to the men of the north or the men of the south. Least my curse fall upon thee. Remember to heed my words. For surely I return again, and I require thee that thee which ye, which ye guard. Aye, even from beyond time and from beyond death will I return, rewarding or punishing as ye have requited your trust. In the biblical text of John 14, 20, Jesus declares to his followers, I go away and come again unto you. Tell no one the Son of Man has risen again. Thoth says, for surely I will come again, betray not my secrets. You know, this is the same stuff. Why is Jesus' stuff, or I call him Yeshua, that's his real name. Why is it the same? Because he learned it from the same source. That's why he's he's te he's reteaching. Just like if I become a physicist and I have a school and, I, and I'm a professor, I have students come and I teach my students. My students, some of those students will become professors and they'll be saying the same things I taught them. This is the same scenario we have here. Okay. Did Jesus sometimes refer to, who, who was also sometimes referred to as Yeshua, did he teach reincarnation? Did Jesus teach reincarnation? The answer is yes. Additionally, reincarnation appears in the Old Testament. Read the last words of the Old Testament in the book of Malachi. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord, and he shall return the heart of the fathers to the children and the heart of the children to their fathers. Least I come and smite the earth with a curse. Here is God speaking through Malachi. He was a famous prophet from often quoted by great leaders throughout history, including U.S. presidents, and actually saying that Elijah is going to come again. Now we find Jesus making the same statement in the book of Matthew. Jesus says, among them that are born of women, there hath not risen a greater than John the Baptist, notwithstanding that he is least in the kingdom of heaven and is greater than he. Matthew 11, 11. Then he says, and if ye will receive it, this is Elias, which was for which was for to come. Matthew eleven fourteen, meaning his coming was prophesied. Therefore, Jesus said he came and he was beheaded. They did with him what they would. And so they will do to me. They're talking about prophesying a person being here, getting killed, coming back again and being the same person with a different name. OK. And now he's saying the same thing is going to happen to him. <clears throat> Pretty interesting stuff. So, so I have this reincarnation photo right here. It gets pretty deep. The animal tablets get pretty deep, guys. It's pretty deep stuff here. I'm going to go through this a little bit more, but I have a, a great announcement I want to make about this. So let me stop sharing my screen so I can come back out of the fractals. And so what I'm going to do is I have now created an audio version of the compendium of the animal tablets. It's actually broken down into uh, chapters and I'm not going to put it on audible. I'm not going to put it on one of those programs because, or, or YouTube, because that, uh, that lowers the value of my book and allows for, uh, for people to steal my, my, my work, which is copywritten. But what I will do, I'm going to put it on forbidden knowledge TV and I'm going to make them into episodes. And so it, it, they're all professionally read by a professional reader, a professional voice, and I'm going to add graphics to each episode so that it's not just a voice you hear. But if you decide to not only listen, which you can listen, but if you want to watch, that there'll be some graphics going on as well. Uh, so that's all being done right now. So I'm converting the, the, the compendium of the Emerald Tablets into a kind of um, a visual book, if you want to call it that, right? Something like that. And but it's going to take a little bit of time, but that's how it's going to be done. All right. So it's going to be it's going to be pretty cool. Uh, it's not just going to be somebody just reading or some dull voice just reading and you're just listening. But it's actually going to incorporate some reenactments and some other things going on in the background, some cutaways to infographics and 
and photos and video clips and everything else, kind of really to make it more of an experience, I would say. All right. So that's what we're doing. That's what we're doing. It's going to be amazing, guys. It's going to be amazing. But I'm telling you, the reason why I got into these Emerald Tablets is because the level of depth of the wisdom in there. And the more you read them, the more knowledge you gain. I'm talking about the same thing. You read them over and over and over and over again. And the more you read them, the more enlightened you become. It's really it's really crazy. It's really, really crazy. It's incredible. That's why I really highly recommend them. Uh, you know, and I'll probably hop on again. Uh, if not next week, the week after, and go into a few more verses. But the within the next month or so, we will have the um, the audio has already been done. I have all the files. I want to create episodes where there's there's um, you know I can't say a screenplay because that's an, that's almost impossible uh, for for budget sakes, but something that's at least enough to make you to grab grab your attention. And actually want to watch or if you just want to go to forbidden tv press play put the phone in your pocket go through your earbuds or don't turn your tv on and clean your house while it's while it's reading to you you can do that too all right it's gonna be it's gonna be great <clears throat> looking forward to that <clears throat> a couple of quick updates before i hop off because <clears throat> i have to hop on an instagram live very shortly uh let me go first to the raffle and let me pull that up because it's almost here, guys. It's countdown time. Today is the 10th. So we literally have the raffle ends on the 19th at midnight. So we literally have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight more days. Eight more days in the raffle. Looking forward to that. Looking forward to doing this giveaway. It's going to be amazing. It's going to change somebody's life. I'm really excited about this. I just ordered my title from the state of Florida for that car so I can have the title and all the documents for it. That's pretty exciting. I'm going to drop this link in the chat right quick. Only nine days to get the raffle ticket. There's a link to it right here. Best of luck to you, whoever wins. It's going to be drawn by a raffle creator, third party, not me. I don't draw the, I'm not doing the drawing. It'll be recorded. On the 20th, we'll be at Pine Ridge Park in Parkland. Anybody from who wants to anywhere in the world want to come, it's open to the public. The address is on the website. And uh, we're going to have somebody film it and 